The ICW between Coinjock and Norfolk is straightforward and simple to navigate. However, multiple bridge repairs did slow us down a bit. We made up for the lost time with smooth cruises to Cape Charles and Crisfield, Maryland. Well, we are here in Queen Jock for a second day. Day two. Yes, which is very, very unusual for us. Uh, although we do love stopping in Queen Jock, we only stay here a day typically, or in fact always, because there's really not a whole lot to do here. They have a great restaurant with uh, the best prime rib you'll ever have, but that's about it. So this is usually a, just a stopover on our way to Norfolk. Yep. Uh, however, uh, we got up this morning and the, the winds and the weather didn't look all that great. We were having 17 knot sustained winds, which is not altogether terrible, but there was gusting into the low 30s and that was going to take place all day long. And a lot of the bridges, they don't open if they gust really high, so I didn't want to be hovering outside a bridge till the storm passed. And when I saw this storm on radar, it was pretty big and it was lasting all day. Well, I don't know if we're really sure that they wouldn't open or not. I, uh, they all have signs saying if there's sustained winds over 25 knots, they will not open. I don't know where they would draw the line at, you know, sustained winds at 20 gusting into the 30s. We weren't really sure and who wanted to be stuck anywhere. Well, there's two other reasons too, because when I woke up in the morning, I looked down the channel this way and up the channel that way, and there was fog all in the channel. And the one thing that we know about this area is that the um, fish pots are sometimes in the magenta line or in the channel. And uh, we didn't want to experience yeah. that again. Yeah, it's really kind of a pain here. It's a, the same thing happens up in the Chesapeake too. There's so many crab pots and fishing areas and things that it's real easy uh, to get caught up in one if you're not careful. And if it's foggy, you know, we're relying on radar in the fog. That's good if I'm looking for a boat or a building or or a marker but they don't they don't pick up the crab pot so anyway that was yeah that was another reason so anyway yeah. we're here and um it's three o'clock and um, I'm, I'm trying to get some editing done but i'm kind of tired of editing and uh we're looking at the at the bar over there and we're thinking maybe maybe it's five o'clock someplace so it's not it's not actually five but someplace yeah. it definitely yeah. is yeah. i think right now uh, in london <laughs> you know, so <laughs> Okay, well anyway, we just figured uh, we'd let you know why, why we're, we're here an extra day and uh, why uh, we're, uh, we'll put it up on Facebook too because we did tell people we were going to be in uh, Norfolk today, but we're not going to be. Uh, we'll be there tomorrow and then probably off to Cape Charles. Do you want to know something interesting about Norfolk? What? My father was stationed there when he was in the Navy. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. I thought so too. Oh. My mom just told me that this morning. Mm. Cool. Okay, well, we'll catch you later. Roger out. Leaving Coing Jock. Well, this is a much better day. It's uh, almost sunny. <laughs> Winds have dropped down probably below 10 knots right now. We just left Coin Jock about a half hour ago. It's nine o'clock in the morning and it's not gonna be a long run. We're going to Norfolk. Uh, if at this rate, we'd be there about one, 1.30, but we do have a number of bridges to get through in a lock and it's always hard to tell how I'm gonna get them timed. So we'll see what happens, um, but we're, we're anxious to, to get to Norfolk and, um, and continue up into the Chesapeake. So we're, we're looking forward to that. And we will see you shortly. Roger out.
much excitement trying to get the bridges in time. Yeah. Yike. They're generally timed pretty well, except that we have a strong current against us, so we need to kind of speed it up in order to uh, get to the bridges. They're a half hour apart. So yep. We should make it just barely. Yep. Yike. Excitement. Well, we are here at the Centerville Turnpike Swing Bridge, uh, where we'll be hovering for a half hour. We had read on the one of the forums, uh, maybe the ICW Facebook page, I'm not sure, that they were doing some kind of maintenance and only opening on the half hour instead of the half and the whole hour. But uh, we took a chance anyway. We figured, well, maybe that was temporary, but now it's uh, only opening on the half hour and we got here exactly on the hour so we have a half hour of sitting here uh, fortunately there is very little current and um, very little wind so i'm not really having to stay at the wheel the whole time like i usually do when i'm waiting for a bridge uh, anyway this is what it looks like here i'll show you and lynn is taking the opportunity to to the lines for the the great lock which we will be getting to right after this there's the great bridge which should open right about when we arrive and then we'll go right into the great lock the great bridge is one of our favorite bridges it just looks really cool do you guys have a favorite bridge on the icw so let us know in the comments So that's Southern Bridge number seven. Uh, Norfolk Southern number seven railroad bridge. This is Seawoods. And they're shut down for repair right now, and they were supposed to open in a few minutes. But just to let you know, they didn't answer the call like that guy just called. I don't know if you heard that. So there's a towboat US, and I know they're full of information. So I asked him, and he said he talked to the bridge, and they said they were supposed to open a few minutes, like 15 minutes ago. So we'll see how this goes. There we go. It is a very easy run from Norfolk to Cape Charles. Just a straight line once you enter the Chesapeake.
The weather was crummy, so we didn't want to spend all day on the water. We decided to go to Chrisfield, about five hours north on the bay. Summers Cove Marina in Chrisfield, Maryland, the crab capital of the world. And they had to set the book the town puts out. I'm just gazing through a map and oh, a whole bunch of coupons for local businesses giving you know discounts and free things. And they always greet you with some food here. <laughs> it's a really good cake. It's, yes. it's the cake of this town. Yeah, it's, it's very good. They gave it to us last time. We loved it. I'm going to put it away and have it tomorrow. 
um, and then we're just going to take a walk around. This is a it's a very large marina, and the people who run it are so friendly. They're they're so uh, obviously look how friendly. You know, they the things are very very happy to help in any way they can. I'm surprised more people aren't here. The second time we've been here, there's a lot of empty slips. Now it's huge. Right? They can hold I don't know 150 boats here. I can't count. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, for some reason, you know, the marina is half empty. And I'm uh, not really sure why. It's a pretty good location. The only thing I could say is this town could use some more restaurants. I mean, Bars. like bar restaurants. Now, there's lots of cafes and confectionery places and things like that, but there's not a whole lot of places. Just, you know, like a, it needs a bistro or a, a quarter deck or something <laughs> uh, that, that make it maybe more enjoyable to come. But other than that, this is it's a great stop. You know, if you're going from, say, Cape Charles or Norfolk and you're going up to... Uh, you know, the Annapolis Deal Solomon area. This is a great stop halfway. And uh, so that's why we do it. I think our fridge is full. Like fritters with a cheesesteak. But it looks good. But we're from Philly. Open it up and see how it goes. Looks like a cheesesteak. Happy pizza. 